one, change exists. Two, change involves the actualization of a potential. This could be intrinsic change like growth or extrinsic change like movement. But whatever it is, change is the result of a thing's potential being actualized, uh, such as liquid water's potential to be solid when it's actualized by cold air. Three, no potential can actualize itself. Four, any change is caused by something actual. The point here is that no potential X can become an actual Y on its own any more than water could just freeze itself or a train car could propel itself. Instead, something like a freezer or a locomotive must actualize the potential for change in these objects. Five, anything that is changing has its potential for existence actualized by something else. And six, there can't be an infinite chain of actualizers. So the impossibility of such an infinite series is explained by the philosopher Gerard Lagrange, who once wrote, to do away with a supreme cause is to claim that, as someone has said, a brush will paint by itself, provided it has a very long handle. In his discussion of St. Thomas Aquinas, who this argument is based on, the atheist J.H. Sobel writes, I am persuaded by it that sustaining causes could not go on to infinity. What this means is that causes which are concurrent with each other cannot be infinite. Such a train, even infinitely long, would have no motion to it, uh, unless you added a car that gives motion to the train without receiving motion from anything else. Seven, therefore, there must be a first actualizer. Eight, this first actualizer could not have any potential, and so it must be an unactualized actualizer, or that which is pure at. For example, we know if it's pure at, there could only be one purely actual actualizer. Uh, if there was more than one, in order to distinguish them, each actualizer would lack something the other had. So this would cause each of them to have potentials, which they can't have if they're purely actual. Also, if there was more than one purely actual being, uh, they would have to exist in a common framework that's more fundamental than either of them, and so neither could be pure actuality. In addition, change only happens when potential is reduced to actual. But this final cause is just pure actuality. So as a result, it can't change. And because time is how we measure change, it follows the cause cannot be subject to time, so it must be timeless. We also know that matter is always changing, at least on the atomic and subatomic levels, and so this cause can't be composed of matter. The cause must also be unlimited because a limit would entail a potential which the thing in question could never actualize. That means the cause is causal power, couldn't be limited. It couldn't have a potential for action that it couldn't actualize. So if the cause is unlimited in power, it would be all-powerful. And because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> 